Hey everyone, I apologize that I'm not here with you guys. So I am going to do the lecture from home, um, but it would be the exact same thing if I was in class. Um, I miss all of you and hopefully I will see you guys later this week. Um, so we are starting the marketing unit and I absolutely love this unit. Um, one, because I studied it in college, that was my major. And then I worked in the marketing industry when I worked for the Chicago Fire. I told some of you guys that, um, which is the men's major league soccer team. Um, so, and then I teach this at West Campus. So I really just enjoy this unit. Um, so we are going to be taking a little bit of notes today. You guys should be getting a new packet. I believe it has a purple cover. So that will be passed out to you. Um, and we're just going to be taking notes in what I believe is going to be the first page. But as we go through the lecture, you'll be able to figure that out. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So what is marketing? So a lot of times people just think that marketing is like advertising, like you have to be this super creative hipster um, in order to work in marketing, but it is much more than that. So marketing is anything from the creation, promoting and presenting the product. Um, and then that product needs to meet some sort of want or need, okay? There's no point in making a product unless it satisfies a want or a need of consumers. Um, I tell my students over at West Campus, when you create a product, it has to be first, better or different. So the first to ever do it, better than what's out there or different than what's out there um, in order to be successful. So marketing really encompasses a lot of different things. So what goes into creating, promoting, and presenting? So creating is, is really fun. I actually really enjoy the creation process of it. This is where you decide how a product is going to look, feel, touch, smell. Um, you really think of all the details in here. And the one way you find out a lot or find out how you want to go about this is through research and development, which is called R&D. This is where you guys research what your competition's doing, what consumers want, and then you develop the product. After you do that, then you promote it. That's the advertisements, the promotions, the coupons. You really push your product out there. Really let people know what's going on, that you're there, um, and really get them excited to buy your product. Then presenting it is making the actual sale. That's where your like sales team comes in um, and really helps close the deal. Now we're going to talk about who you market to and who, you know, what we refer our, as our customer base as. So we're going to start in a general term. So think of kind of like a funnel. So we're going to start really broad and then we're going to narrow it down throughout this lecture. So a market is just a group of customers who share common wants and needs and have the ability to purchase a product. And I'm just giving you guys time to write it down as if I were in class with you. On the next slide, I'll show you guys some examples of different markets. So these are some examples of different markets. And honestly, you guys probably fall into a few of these categories on the screen. And this is just a small snapshot of all different types of markets. Um, we will get into more in later um, later in the week, but this is just gives you an idea. So teen females who are athletes, um, dads who are gamers, these are markets. So each one of these categories has a group of people who all share some sort of common want or need. And they also have money to spend. You know, they have the ability um, to buy the products and services that are being put out there. Okay, now we're gonna funnel a little bit more narrow. So we had market, which is a really general term, and that just kind of refers to female athletes. But you guys know there's a ton of different female athletes. There's different ages, there's different sports. So in order to get a little bit more specific, you become a target market. So a target market is a specific group of consumers that you basically aim your marketing efforts at. 
And businesses will perform detailed research on this market to find out exactly what they're looking for. Okay, these markets are very specific. Um, and on the following slides, I'll show you guys some examples, but a market could be female athletes. But we know that not every female athlete is the same. Okay, they come from different geographic areas, they have different ages, they play different sports. So, um, for example, this might be a little bit more specific. What if I said female athletes from the ages of 16 to 25 that live in suburban and urban areas and play lacrosse? Okay, and they're, they're middle to high income. That would be a lot more specific. Um, and, it, and to be honest, target marketing is even more specific than that. But that's just kind of a, um, an example like on the fly. So target markets are broken into three things, okay? Um, I call them basically like the mighty graphics. So you have demographics, geographics, psychographics, okay? Um, I You might have been exposed to these before, maybe in like a, a history class or a social studies class, but I'm going to walk you through the three of them. Um, so demographics, you guys, is anything personal about you. So you can see on the list here, it can be things like your age, your income, nationality, your ethnicity. Um, and you may be wondering like, well, why does some of this matter? Like this is kind of stereotyping. For some products, it does matter, your marital status or ethnicity. Um, but then for some, for some products, it doesn't. But demographics does encompass all of these things. Okay, so this is anything personal to you. Then you guys have geographics. And geographics is pretty, I think, the easiest one to understand. Geographics is where you live, information about where you live. So it can be anything from the continent down to the country, down to the state, even down to the neighborhood you live in. Okay, it also has to do with the climate. If you guys think about it, a Target in Florida is probably going to sell different products than a Target in Illinois. Okay, so climate does matter. Population matters too. Are you in a suburban area like the suburbs? Are you in the city? Are you out in the country in a rural area? Okay, um, a luxury clothing company is probably not going to market their products in a rural, um, you know, farm town out in DeKalb. So geographic says anything to do about with where you live. Then lastly, psychographics is probably the hardest one to pin down because it is um, more emotional and more mental. So psychographics include personal interests, your attitudes, things you value, and your behaviors. So it's things that you like to do in your free time. Maybe you like to hike. You're very outdoorsy. Um, or maybe you're an introvert. You like to be alone. You like to be alone with your thoughts. You read, you write, uh, you paint. And then it's things that you value. You value quality, comfort, trust, you know, family. So these are things that go with psychographics. Um, so demographics are facts about you, okay? Um, these are pretty much cold, hard facts. Geographics, or where you live, and psycho is very personal. It's mental and emotional. So when you put all of these together, that makes, you know, that's what breaks down your target market. Um, in a couple days, I'm gonna challenge you guys to kind of think about target markets for some of these products that you guys use. Like, who do you think they're going after? So anytime we talk about a target market, we're gonna be acknowledging these three categories. So here's an example of a target market. So this would be for athletic shoes. So I'm going to give you guys a minute um, just to look this over. You can always pause the video as well. But you can see it's broken down into maybe the demographics, down to psychographics, um, the ways they prefer to hear about um, products and services, what kind of content they like. All right. So this would be an example of a company that makes athletic shoes and who they would be going after. Okay, and then I should have one more example on the next slide for you guys. Okay, and so this one is different. 
This one is for, say, organic protein bars. So same categories, the demographics, psychographics, challenges that this, you know, target market may face, how they like to hear about things, you know, what content they enjoy the most. Okay. And this is what companies really have to do because you guys can make a product or service that you think is great, but if you're not, you know, appealing to the consumer who's going to be spending the money, um, you know, then that's a, that's a problem. That's a business problem because every business, their end goal guys is, is, is to make a profit, you know, to make money. All right. So I thought it would be good to show you guys an example of a company that you should all be pretty familiar with. Now, I don't expect all of you to shop at Starbucks or to, you know, have, have, have ever been even to a Starbucks, but I want to tell you guys that Starbucks holds around 33% of the market share for coffee in the U.S. And that's wild. If you guys think about it, 33% of the population in the U.S. that drinks coffee is drinking Starbucks. That is a pretty big market share considering how many competitors there are from big names like Dunkin' Donuts down to little mom and pop shops. So Starbucks has two target markets. So their primary target market is not you guys. It is me. Um, so 25 to 40. And those people, 25 to 40 year olds, account for 50, almost 50% of their business. These people are high income. They have professional careers. They like contemporary design. And they view Starbucks as a status symbol. They like when products make them feel like they have, uh, they're of a status. Okay. Um, so Starbucks is primarily going after those people. So the way they market the products they make, those are going to be geared towards that 25 to 40 year old, um, that hit all of those little bullet points. Now, after that market is satisfied, their second, um, target market is going to be young adults. Uh, not you guys yet. Cause you're still, you know, 15, 14, um, possibly 16, but the young adults they're going after are 18 to 24 year olds. And that is a total of 40% of their sales, which is pretty good. These are college students, you know, kids that want to hang out, write their papers, meet people. Um, they like technology, which Starbucks is, you know, does have, you guys can, um, you know, use their wireless charging. You can order through the app. You can listen to, you know, check out what music they have using their Spotify. Um, so they do have technology, you know, embedded in their culture at Starbucks. And it's a cool image. Okay. When you guys go into a Starbucks, they do cultivate this, this really cool, um, eclectic, you know, vibe. So, um, and every Starbucks is the same, you know, it's very, uh, consistent. All right. So this is tar Starbucks target market. Okay. And companies, every company does something like this. It may look different, but they do break it down. Okay. We're going to probably end with market research. So let me just go through this. Um, we will do a whole, um, you know, activity and, and dive really deep into market research. But for today, I just want to get you guys the definition. Um, companies do market research to gather and study information about consumers to determine what kind of goods and services to make. Okay. Again, I can't stress this enough. You may think you're, you have an idea that's amazing, but if nobody wants it, okay. If it's not appealing to, to consumers, then there, there's really nothing there. So you can collect this data through multiple ways. You can give out surveys, which um, when I get back to school, um, I'd love to talk more about this because I'm sure some of you have participated in some sort of market research. Uh, you can do personal interviews, focus groups, product testing. There's a lot of great things that you can do to get um, good data from consumers in order to make really awesome goods and services. So I'm going to give you guys a sec just to write this down, um, and then we are going to close up this, uh, this lecture and, um, we'll talk more about it, uh, in the following days. Okay. I'm going to stop here tomorrow. There'll be another video where I talk about the four P's in the event I'm not here. Um, but hopefully I'll be back in school tomorrow. Um, 
uh, to go over this with you guys. So we are going to stop here. Please make sure you, you know, you finish up the notes and then tomorrow we're going to dive into the four P's. Miss you guys. And I will hopefully be back very, very soon.